truth? Oh, I'm all ears. Okay. The truth. I always tell the truth, even when I lie. Why do you find it so hard to believe? Why do you find it so easy? It's never been easy! You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Hello and welcome to Truthful Talk. I'm your host, Marco George, and we are back with you today. Uh, we have another very special guest, but before we get to that, let me, of course, introduce to you once again, Natalie. Thank you for being here, Natalie. Thank it's you for having me, Marco. Always good to be working with you on this. Ditto. 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 I love it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ditto it is. But we're excited because back with us in studio is Rob Moss. Thanks for being here, oh, Rob. I'm very happy to be here. It's very fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, the, yeah, because it, it, the funny thing is all, all the stuff we start talking about before we actually right. jump on here. Yeah. It's like we, 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 we actually, we go through it entire episodes before we even press record. So it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Save it for the podcast. <laughs> Can't even. That's so, <laughs> yeah, true. So, yeah, it's, it's great to have you back. And Thank you. Uh, you know, I know, I know today we wanted to talk about the importance of training mm. as, as an actor and uh, why it's so necessary to, to train. Mm-hmm. Cause I think we get, we get so many, we get so many students or I say students, people that want to get into acting that don't understand that it's something that we need to train for. Yeah. Right. There's a misconception that you're either born with it or you're not. Yeah. Um, I, I started with no training at all, right? I, I went to a theater audition and uh, got cast in something and, you know, I had no idea <laughs> what I was doing. Uh, <laughs> and it was, it was uh, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and it wasn't until several shows later that I began to realize, oh, if I'm going to do this, I should learn about it. Um, be- I think the trap for people is – in most other disciplines, you can appreciate uh, that they train. You know, for instance, sports, they train. Right. You know, a, a professional tennis player or, or basketball player doesn't mm-hmm. stop practicing. Um, you know, when they get into the the big game, they continue to do that over and over again. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think we can appreciate that technical prowess. But when we're, when we're looking at actors, it just looks like they're living – you know, and, right. and, uh, and and uh, and so I don't think people appreciate how how challenging it can be uh, to do. And so I think training is absolutely essential, as it is in any craft or or any profession uh, where you're relying on your your physical ability or you're using some part of yourself to to fulfill that job. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's just misleading. I think we don't we don't realize how much goes into it. So training is absolutely vital. Um, and and the, you, you mentioned uh, people are born with it, mm-hmm. right? I, I thought that too. Uh, and and it, I think to some degree there's some truth in that. But you still have to develop whatever it is that you come to the table with. You know, you still have to work uh, to be able to mm-hmm. hone that, that ability that you might have. You know, I think it's essential. I 1,000% agree that training, no matter what, the road as the actor, especially the, the let's say, more quote unquote success that you have, eventually, even if you had no training, and we had this conversation before, and that just, just have, you look the part and there it is and you're thrown in this thing. Eventually, if you love this and you want to do this as a career, you will find yourself in a room with an acting coach. Yes. Somewhere down the, the studio is going to be like, okay, if you yes. want to do this, or I just saw something, uh, it's like, I think The Rock is coming out with a, a new movie and he's totally transformed. But when I see it, I'm just like, look at him go. <laughs> because of from where he came from to what he's going to be doing, it's p- supposed to be like in- incredible acting, but he he's The a Rock. Lot, a lot of growth. A lot of growth. Yeah. I think it happened with like Will Smith, I know what happened with. I know Rihanna, the singer, it happened. Like certain people just... Like, okay, I'm going to, I want to be confident. I want to be able to do this, um, but I want to do it well. And you have to train. Absolutely. 
You know, I mean, that's <laughs> if you. I, I think our our goal should be to be just a little bit better than we were the day before. Yeah. And, and and so I think training is what brings you experience as well, but training is what helps you move forward. Uh, you mentioned uh, Rihanna, the singer. You know, singers continue to work on on their ability right. to sing even after they've attained huge levels of success. Yeah. So it's it's something that uh, I, I think we neglected our peril. You know. I was watching The Crown, and I'm a massive fan of Vanessa Kirby. She plays Princess Margaret. Mm. Come to find out, her her background was theater. She got in without, like you did, just which is interesting. She got in because of whatever, what like she was just able to land that role. But she, in her interview, says say that she says that she did not have training, but and she noticed that okay, I want to get better. And what she did was just she was so I I paid attention to all of my colleagues, and they were kind enough to give me this this ad, advice, the craft, and she just kept honing her craft on theater, and she has a massive, extensive. Uh, theater list that she's mm-hmm. been doing for years and years and years and years before she even stepped onto the big time that she's in. But it's crazy because even someone like that just said, okay, I'm in, but I don't have training. I still need to look for something to help me get, I want to do what they're doing. And yeah. I don't know. And they were kind enough to give her that information. Mm-hmm. But there is this, yeah, there is this misconception that the great actors are just born with this ability Right. to do this thing called acting. And I, you know, it, there's a misconception because it's, they're either putting it on themselves where they think it's going to be easier. I'm going to go find out whether I have this talent or not. And that's what they think an acting class is. It's like an assessment of, yes, you have talent. Good. You can go act mm-hmm. or maybe finding out, no, I don't. And then that's their excuse for not acting, not realizing it's nobody is born with this talent. <laughs> Nobody is born with it. And you can't. It's impossible to be born naturally as an actor because there's a list of a thousand things that you have to learn that are skills that you will – there's no way to naturally understand those skills Mm -hmm. because it's not what we normally do as a human being. So it'd be, it'd be different like because it looks like that. It looks like, oh, well, we're just living. Yeah. (laughs) And to a large part we are, but – we're not living like we do in the real world. Right. We're living in a, in a very <laughs> enhanced way, in a very specific way. The conversations that we have are very specific, and the way we speak is very specific. How we move is very specific, and all of that has to be trained. And what I find is that actors who think they have a natural ability or God forbid if anyone ever tells them, wow, you're just a natural at this, which I think is the worst thing anyone can ever be told. Mm. I think the most damaging thing anyone can ever be told is that they're somehow natural at what they're doing because if they believe it, they'll stop training. Mm. And if they don't do the work and I've, and I've had the unfortunate experience of working with actors that this has happened to, where they the potential is i mean their their ceiling is so high they they could reach hollywood broadway i mean they could reach that but because they start believing in this well i'm naturally talented they pull back on the work mm. and then they fall from grace mm. and all of a sudden 2 years later they out of the industry yeah. completely yeah it happens a lot it's so 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 damaging to that belief, but I hear it all the time. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, they're so natural. I'm like, stop saying that. <laughs> don't use those words because that's that's almost telling someone you're so good at this, you don't need to put work into it. Right. Yeah, and I think that is the takeaway, right? It, yeah, it's like, oh well, you have a natural ability, you don't need to train. You know, um, I think we do have certain aptitudes for things. You know, if if uh, for instance, music, you might have a certain aptitude for that. It comes to you maybe more easily than the next person. Um, but that being said, uh, it's been my experience as a teacher over the last many years. It, it, it's the, the person who works hard at their training and really applies themselves and, and uh, is willing to take risks and, and sometimes fall short um, and then learn from that and continue and do it again, uh, I think those folks that work very hard – uh, eclipse folks with whatever natural ability Charisma they might have or aptitude or, yeah. they might have for the the craft. Um, you know, like you said, talent that never gets fully developed or realize is realizes its full potential. 
you know? And, and yeah, and the aptitude is usually just personality. Yeah. That's all it is, yeah. it's personality. Someone is is less apprehensive about making a fool out of themselves in front of others, for mm. example. So they'll get up and they'll be the class clown or they'll get up <coughs> and didn't do that, which is just <clears throat> typically a cover for other things, but we won't get into that psychological thing. But it's, it, it, but what I find is that I don't know if I've seen yet, at least in the people I've trained, somebody that has had a natural ability that has gone far. Mm. In all the people I've trained, the people that have had to struggle through it have made it far. Because mm. they, because if you have any, if you feel or if you believe that you're naturally good, then why work hard at it? Mm. We're, we're creatures of, of uh, safety. And so we're always looking to put the least amount of effort into something just from a DNA mm-hmm. standpoint. We're not going to put any effort into something we don't have to. Mm. So if, if I'm told, oh, you're, you're great at that. You don't, you know, you're naturally, then why, why work hard at it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> so, and we see that, right? The start of a semester, we'll see <laughs> students that maybe th- just through their personality and who they are, like the, the natural aptitude towards something, they do a better job in the beginning of the semester. They fall very below true. by the end of the semester of our training because they're not putting in the work. It is. It's like you said, they tend to rest on that. You know, it's, it's oh, well, I've got this. You know, and, and they don't, they don't put in that extra time. Uh, it's been my experience too, Marco. You know, the people that uh, struggle a lot, mm-hmm. um, but stick with it, uh, tend to excel mm-hmm. eventually, you know? Um, but I, I think we like to do things that we feel like we're good at, you know? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and so, yeah, but yeah. So you're saying people only do the things that they're already naturally good at? I think we're drawn to things we think we're good at. You know, and and as you said, it's just wired into us, and we'll avoid the things that we we think maybe we're not. Um, and and I guess I'm wired different because I'm the opposite. Yeah, I'm drawn to things I'm not good at, and then I want to master it. Well, you're you're that person that loves that challenge. But I think as an yeah. actor, that's critical. I, I, th- I think because right. when when I see actors that only want to play things that are close to themselves, yeah. which means I'm going to play a part that I'm good at because it's already me, mm. it's not impressive. Yeah, that's that's a different ball of wax for me. I agree a hundred percent. You have know. to go into yeah. if to me taking on a project as an actor, as a director, as a producer. If it doesn't scare me, I don't want to do it. Mm. Yeah, if there's no challenge in it for you. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so yeah, I like to do things that, that kind of stretch and, and push the boundary back as well. Um, uh, so it, it, once you're there, I think that's absolutely true. But I think when people are thinking about starting out, um, uh, you know, for instance, oh, well, I tried that for a minute and I was no good at it. Mm-hmm. So, right. uh-huh. so I just gave it up, uh, versus, well, I tried that and I wasn't very good at it. But I'm mm-hmm. going to keep doing it because over time <laughs> I will then develop the skill, mm-hmm. you know, right. and I think that's just hard for people people to see um that, that just because you're not good right away mm-hmm. you know yeah. doesn't mean that you can't be right uh we all have to start somewhere yeah. and and uh, even these folks that you know for whatever reason they have some some uh, aptitude or proclivity to do the thing and they, they are good with language or something like that you know e- even those folks uh get better over time yeah you know right um so so it's it's you have to be willing to not be so good in the in the beginning. You have to you be know, not you good. Have, right. You have to be willing to go through that that process. Which to you know? me then comes down to not a natural skill, mm. but a love. True. You have to find something that you're willing to sacrifice all of the the downtimes through. Mm. Meaning, and to me, they're not downtimes, but some people might look at it the times where you're not good at what you're doing. <laughs> the learning process mm-hmm. of that. And the people that I've found that feel they're naturally good at something, they, they don't want to, there's an ego involved. Mm-hmm. They don't want to be given direction. They don't want to be told how they have to improve. They don't want to put in any extra work. They just want to rely on their natural ability. Yeah. And that only goes so far and then they fall out of the industry or, or they, they end up dropping the class because, yeah. or, or just, you know, would, would, or would, what I've seen, unfortunately, over and over is you quit the industry. Oh, At yeah. some point, you're faced now with, I either have to admit that I'm not as good as I thought I was, mm-hmm. or I have to go do something else, which means I never have to admit it. Mm-hmm. I can tell everyone, oh, I just didn't want to do it anymore. 
Yeah. Which is right is is the cop out approach, and and then say no, I'm just I, no, I, I I yeah I did it and I didn't like it, or mm-hmm. I, I don't want to do it anymore. I want to do this instead. It's like no, go you you had something. Go back and work at it, and mm-hmm. and you could be great. Yeah. But it takes a humility. It takes it takes being so humble in this industry. A, even a little bit of ego, I think, destroys actors. It, it certainly can. You know, I, I, you mentioned this idea of humility. One of the things that uh, a wonderful teacher I had many years ago uh, said to me on the first day of class was, "Forget everything you know. Mm-hmm. You know, nothing you know is going to help you here." And uh, and and uh, that that was such a impactful thing. Yeah. Uh, th- to hear, you know, it was like, okay, well, I can approach this then with the utter humility of a student. You know, I, I can I can approach it now uh, with beginner's mind. And, and that helped me so much. Yeah. You know, to just because I had been working quite a bit before that. And and so being told that, you know, that none of your prior knowledge or your prior experience is going to be helpful to you um, just kind of cleared the slate. And I was like, okay, well, nice. now, I, now I can just be here and, and absorb what what's going on. Versus trying to uh, mm-hmm. attain some level, you know, or feel like I have to start here and then and then advance. Right. You know, I, I had permission to just begin, and, and that was really nice. Which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Or shovel <laughs> what you have. <laughs> yeah. You know, out of the way. Yeah. yeah. Or you know, it, some people do put it in the way. Those who are not mm. ready to be truthful with themselves and that humil- humility to 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 let that go. I find actually a lot of let's say introverted students or people, mm. I find them, even though in the beginning it's difficult because they're so quiet or, you know, introverted. <laughs> yeah. But I just find that they, that big mountain, they climb quietly. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain it. They do it. They're with you. They're always in class. They're, they're doing the work. They're, you know, putting their voice. I, I just, instead of somebody who is on the opposite spectrum, let's say not having that clean slate, mm-hmm. not being ready to be a student, Whatever they know is better than what the teacher knows. And it's like, how do you work with that right now in this? You know, how would you, how, I just can't compute that, but I see it happening. And the pushback from the ego is from the ego, you know, whatever that is that they know better. And when people just, like you said, clean that slate or have a clear slate, I see those come through and make massive. Yes. It's like yeah. the, the, what do you, the hair and the turtle thing? It's, it's, it's crazy how I'm just seeing the, that emerge that I never really was able to view before. But I'm like sitting back and watching. I can see now. Well, that's one of my favorite quotes is slow and steady wins the yeah. race. I say yeah. it every day. Yeah. 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 My wife, Sam, is sick of me saying that. But I, I'm like, <laughs> no, slow and steady wins yeah. the race. It's like, let's not, you know, it, the moment we try to rush to get somewhere, we're somehow going to sabotage that that journey. So, so it's true. it's no, just just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. And it will deliver us to where we need to go. But it's, but that's, but so many actors are rushing. They're always in a hurry. Yeah. <laughs> in a, to get somewhere. Right. I don't know where. But. I don't either. I don't know where we're going, but, uh, but I, I find, you know, that patience is, is something that that's absolutely essential, you know, as you're training and as you're learning uh, to be patient with oneself, you know, to be patient with the process of learning hmm. and, and acquiring yes. a skill. I think is so absolutely vital uh, because we want we want, we have an idea of where we want to go and we want right. to get there as quickly as possible and and it's like I, I say in class you know there there just there simply are no shortcuts right you know you At have all. to go through the very difficult process of learning and and improving and nothing can rush that it's very much like a flower that blooms you know it's, it's, it's you can't stand in front of a rose bush and demand that it bloom now, right now right now <laughs> you know? or tomorrow uh, <laughs> it, it happens when it happens yeah. And, yeah. and and we just have to be willing uh to be where we are you know instead of thinking so much about where we're going, you know, and, and I think there's some freedom and beauty in that, mm-hmm. uh, to be able to, uh, fully be present in, in the, in the challenge, you know, it, it, we want to get past the challenge. Right. And I think the challenge mm-hmm. is actually the thing, you know, um, and it never stops, and you know, no, stops. no matter where you, what you attain or what, what level of skill you acquire, there's always another level there's always another 
destination. So you might as well focus on what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I I love that. Yeah, because it goes into my my second favorite quote, or maybe this is my first, but art is never finished, only abandoned. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that one. And I think I say that every class. I think I mean, (laughs) I say at some point, art is never finished, only abandoned. Yeah. It, because there's always something else we can be working on. There's always something. Else. I mean, r- regarding either our own art, regarding a project, yeah, or you know whether it's a play or a film or a character, it's we're never done. Mm-hmm. We can work on a character for years, right? <laughs> or we can work on it for six weeks. I mean, it's it's we're never done with a character because there's a there's an evolution involved. And I think that's what's so important because the, the, I think one of the main things students are constantly reaching out to me. Asking the question, what else can I be working on? Oh, I get that one a lot too. Mm, right? Yeah. I, I, want it, I want to move faster through my career, so what else can I be working on to improve? And I give them the same couple things over and over and over. Work on the core, right? Yeah. Work on outward focus, which we have an exercise that we teach our students. Uh, it's called the core, and it's, it's an outward focus exercise. So I say work on that, which they don't want to hear. And <laughs> because they're like, no, I, I know. But what to, else? What else? What else? <laughs> so then I'll give them read out loud. Mm-hmm. They don't want to hear that. No. Nope. Or work on your voice. W- work on, work on I, breathing techniques, working on voice. And it's like, yeah, but what else can I do? Can I work on monologues? Can I work on, I'm like, no, you can't. Don't, please, no, stop. Don't. <laughs> you're going to, you, classes for that. Working with a director is for that. Work on the things that you're not going to be working on when you're either in an advanced class or you're on a play or you're on a film. No one's working with you on those, these other things that are fundamental to your success. Yeah. The core is fundamental to success. Voice is fundamental to success. It's like work on those things so then you're ready for them when you need them. Mm-hmm. But it's amazing. Actors are like, yeah, but what else can I do? I'm like, you, you know, I have a deep appreciation for the question, you know, <laughs> that they want to be doing those things. You know, that there's they have that drive that they want to work on something when they're not in class or they're not working on a role. Uh, but but like you, I'm, I'm just focus on fundamentals, you know, keep building those skills that are foundational that you're going to use every single time, you know? Yeah, I, I guess – I have an appreciation for how they handle my response to the question. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't really like the question yeah. because nine out of 10, they don't like my response, which mm. means the real question is, is there something I can do that would give me an advantage or is a shortcut through oh, the process? Yeah, yeah. That's what they're really asking. Because mm-hmm. when I tell them the actual answer and they don't like it, Mm-hmm. They're saying, no, 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 no. I want something that's, that's going to put no, no, me no. there I know faster. Better. What else? What else is it? <laughs> right. I yeah. know better what, mm. what else is. But when they actually take it in and say, oh, okay, I'm going to start doing that. Right. Well, then it's like, okay, this is somebody that really wants to work on their craft. Yeah. They want to do it. But man, there's this rush. And so to me, a lack of patience. And, and so I, I try to teach this. It's very difficult to teach. But what I try to do is they have to understand the reason why I want you to work on core, core is about being in this moment, mm-hmm. outward focus. You can't work on the core if you're impatient. That's true. Impatience <laughs> means we're thinking about the future and where we need to get to. Mm-hmm. So we're focused ahead and trying to circumvent the, uh, the journey. Yeah. Right? How do I get there faster? Well, we're outside of the moment. We're not in the present moment. It takes an incredible amount of patience to be in the present moment, which also leads to the next thing. It takes pr- uh, patience to be in the present moment, to be here now, which also takes gratitude. Mm. When we are impatient, we are lacking gratitude because impatience says, I don't like where I am now. There's something about this I don't mm-hmm. want. Mm-hmm. I want what is up in the head in the mm-hmm. future. True. How do I get there faster? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to me, gratitude, humility, patience, that is, those are the intangibles that make up a great artist. Wow. Well said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, gratitude can change your life. Can change your life. Right? Yeah. Not just your art. It can change your life. Right. Um, you know, we, we, we're pleasure seeking, pain avoiding organisms, 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and so uh, when we are going through some kind of difficulty or maybe we're having a challenge in acting class or something like that, we, we become uh, dissatisfied and we want to avoid it because um, it doesn't feel good. But my, my view is embrace all of it. You know, be grateful for all of it. Uh, do we want tough experiences? No, we don't, you know, get, yeah, I'm having a tough experience. You know, it's not that, <laughs> but it is, there's an appreciation that we can develop or, or nurture within ourselves over time for those very challenges. If we begin to understand that it is those things that are going to propel us forward, uh, if we can just be with them. Versus trying to, as you said, get around them or go over them or in some way avoid the the difficulty. And most you – know? and the actors who are beginning out, especially Meisner 1, Meisner 2, so I mean, fast forward even to me, it takes a long time to be okay with that process of letting it breathe for a mm -hmm. bit, being patient. It's and. To be even aware that you're impatient is yeah. is a major like uh, threshold that you go through. But it each individual is different to have to go through that. And yeah. you know, you guys as teachers, it's incredible how patient you are with the students <laughs> because you know that they have to come to that themselves. And the acting in general, anybody and everybody should actually take acting classes, like an in depth class something like this because it does allow you to be okay in this moment with yourself and in the beginning that is impossible you can't it's mm -hmm. it's you you're just almost realizing who you are and what you're doing at this moment and all it is is freaking out because you're on stage doing something and it's such a small step by step process but it's so fruitful when I call it, I've been calling it a mature actor. And I, I that's what I keep hearing myself say, but I don't mean that word. I just mean maybe somebody who's had extensive training and kind of went through a certain, certain arc that they finally came to the other side. And it's like, oh, you can look back and say, this is why. And things settle. And you don't know how or why, but they're starting to settle. But it was like, there was no way that one could have been aware of that previously. Yeah. Even just being, you know, they just think that they're normal. This is how I am day to day. What, why am I not good enough now? Or why am I having such a hard time? And they're so, I don't know. I, I think it, it is also control. Yeah. You know, and, and wanting to control the path of, of things. Oh, and, so and in the much. beginning, I think we try so hard, you know, we're just trying and trying and trying. And that trying comes off, it has a certain kind of energy mm -hmm. in it. Uh, whereas I, what you're calling a mature actor, they, they, they've they let go of this idea and, and there's a do kind of attitude versus a try uh -huh. kind of, I'm just going to do this. And whatever it is, is what it will be. Yeah. You right. know, and, and I think that learning that acceptance and, and that, that's a very difficult thing. Uh, but it does happen, you know, over, over time. And letting go, that yeah. comes up. That's Absolutely another word that comes go. up more so than not lately. It's like, let go. Well, that's that's an interesting thing because this whole idea of letting go, which is ultimately what, where we need to be. Mm -hmm. We do a ton of preparation, which is rehearsal. We do a ton of preparation leading into a project, whatever that project is, film, television, theater. And, but when we're performing, we have to let go. Which really means get out of your head, stop thinking about it, stop trying to do anything. Yeah. Let everything go, be in this moment, and really do it. But in order to let go, we have to have the ability to be in this moment, which means in order to let go, we must have patience and gratitude. Yeah. You, you can't have one without the other. You can't be patient and ungrateful <laughs> because both exist outside the present moment. Mm. So if I'm like, well, I'm, I'm patient, but I really hate everything that's going on. Well, <laughs> if I'm the only reason, if you hate what's going on, then you're thinking about either the past or the future. You're thinking about how to circumvent it and get around it. And, and so, well, you're not having patience then, or if we're really grateful, but I want to be grateful and then move on. It's mm -hmm. like, well, then you're not really gr grateful is grounding yourself. So you need both patience and gratitude go hand in hand. So what I try to do with students, because it's, it's difficult to teach. I know you, you, you start off with it in Meisner 1, which is our entry into our program. And I know you, Rob, you know, try to teach that there, but, and I try to continue with it in Meisner 2. 
but it's difficult. But what I do, I put the focus on gratitude. Gratitude is something that I think they can work on by just doing a gratitude journal, Mm -hmm. saying out loud what you're grateful for, trying to be appreciative of something around you every day. That's something you can work on. When I try to get people to work on patience, oof. (laughs) <laughs> but I figure if I can get them to be grateful for something in that moment, maybe they're having a moment of patience. Patience develops. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, gratitude is, is – it's been such an important thing for me in my life, you know, because uh, I have so much to be grateful for, you know. And I, I think just early in my life, I, I, it, without knowing it, you know, it wasn't something I consciously did. Uh, but I had to look for things because life was difficult early right. on. And I, I had to look for things to be grateful for, for my own well-being, you know. And and, and so I, I think I, it's just been something that's built over time uh, to just approach life that way. And, and if you can approach your art that way, uh, magical things begin to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, as Cheryl Crow said in one of her songs years ago, you know, it's not about – getting what you want it's about wanting what you've got yes you know and and that had an impact on me as well uh, to just appreciate uh, even like i said some of the more difficult times you know because in some way you're going to come out expanded in some way uh, you're going to come through that challenge either more resilient uh better prepared a uh, deeper understanding perhaps mm-hmm. of something uh you know a, a gratitude or appreciation for something or someone, you know, something's going to come out of it uh, that will add to your life. Mm -hmm. You know, at least in my experience, that's been true. I mean, the, the lack of gratitude is a very negative place. It's fear. Mm -hmm. So lack of gratitude is fear and something we work through in the process that I'm working every semester with students on is, is getting out of the box of fear in order to step into the present moment, the unknown moment we can't allow fear to attach and pull us back, right. which is up here. It's in, our, it's in our logical mind versus in our emotional core, which is more in our, our center. And so we, we have to work on this, gra- I, you know, because uh, this it falls into the previous conversation of when I find someone that is trying to rush the process or is not humble or thinking they're naturally talented, they're finding the shortcut. Mm-hmm. They, they're not okay with where they are in the process. Yeah. And you're always saying... You're right where you need to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Trust the process. And you're, you're always saying those things, yeah. which I think it takes some time for students to understand. It, it it does, you know, because like I said earlier, we always have this destination in mind, you know, or, or some vision for, for where we want to go. And, and so, yeah, it is very difficult to accept, especially for people just starting out, uh, that what's happening right now. And where you are in on along your your path in life or your your artistic path, where you are is exactly where you ought to be. Yeah. Right. Because there's no other place where the growth that you're seeking can happen. Right. Right. It has to happen right. here, right now. Yeah. And it's always that. And and so yeah, I, I think it is a difficult lesson to learn, but it, it's also uh, something that over time I think uh, is is absolutely doable. You know, oh, I de- yeah, yeah, I definitely think it's doable. I, I think we can all get there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just takes time to... Were you always patient? No. N- no? <laughs> no? No. Says no. <laughs> no. Okay. No. My, I think that like the one thing I remember growing up my mother telling me is like, you need to learn patience, you know, and I did from young. Oh, yeah. and I think it's her first like things telling me. But um, I found that in the training that it... it came out to uh, my day-to-day life and vice versa. Like, so I've heard before the, someone was asked, like, do you guys find that acting changes your life? And, and it was, she asked both of us and we come from two different places of study. And I remember the other actress said, no, you know, okay, that's cool for her. And then this woman, she looked at me and I go, absolutely. So, see, I would curse right now. Absolutely. You can curse. Oh, I was going to say absolutely. fucking lutely yeah. How does it not? How does yeah. it, how did it, it changed my life. I cannot have one healthy without the other for me. Right. That's, I don't know if that was a choice or letting it, letting go, opening up, you know, just mm-hmm. kind of um, seeing the world through uh, eyes, through gratitude, like a filter. Yes. Yeah. And 
I can't turn that on just when I'm on stage and then not be able to do that out there. Like just everything becomes more rich. Um, so it did for me 100% change for the better me uh, with my ability to listen to people, to express myself in a healthy manner, to have my voice be heard, right. to give myself yeah. respect. And this is just like a, a, a journey that I've kind of coming up on now over the years and years of training that I've been doing that. I hear very close family members ask me questions. You know, they, I don't know what you're doing or what you've done, but, and they know that I'm an actor, you know, this is, and they'll ask me about voice class and all this stuff, but I can, I can see it. I can feel it. And so can I, it's right. just, I just don't see how one does not maybe eventually in time, maybe, you know, that happens. And it's luckily gratefully hap happened to me, happens to me, but in the beginning, maybe I couldn't see that, how, how that would happen. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, maybe the person you're referring to, maybe they hadn't really thought about it. Maybe they're like, no. <laughs> um, because I don't see how it, it couldn't. You know, when, when, when you're thinking about the skills of an actor, when you think about uh, giving your full attention to somebody, we seldom do that in life. <laughs> Never. In life, you know, yeah. when you think about really listening, you know, and as you said, being more expressive and, and, and really speaking what's mm -hmm. true to you, mm -hmm. uh, being present. You know, and, and being in adjustment to everything that's happening around you and to you, uh, actually uh, fighting for something that you care about, uh, th those are life skills, you know. And yeah. so I don't see how uh, if you really have developed skills as an actor, how they wouldn't then translate uh, into something that, that has cha at least changed the way you see the world around you uh, or the way you show up in the world. Or they didn't have in-depth training. Maybe perhaps, they took a yeah. two-week well, course. Well, yeah, that, that's perhaps. that's the thing too. I mean, most training in the U.S. that's that's you know once-a-week classes type mm -hmm. of thing, scene study classes. Mm -hmm. They're not going into any of this. It's all technical. That's true. So you have actors that are just trying to apply a, a skill, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. just a learned thing that they do, but it doesn't change their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Too. I mean, outside of conservatory, I, there's very few classes that are teaching listening. Or teaching being present, they're teaching. They're they're going into the the analytics and mm -hmm. how do you break down a script? What's the objective? What's the you know? It's, it's all very yeah, you know, like a thing you're putting on versus right. versus something that's coming through. Mm -hmm. Right. Know? It's yeah. the deeper conservatory training that yeah that teaches those other levels. And so, but if you are, and even within this, even within our studio, not every student fully takes it on. That's true. They come in and they try to do a good, good job, quote unquote, good job in class, mm -hmm. but they're not. And you can tell by decisions they make and how they live in their life. Mm -hmm. You can tell the ones that are, are changing in life and incorporating the lessons out there and the ones that are trying to hold true to what their life is mm -hmm. or do something different. Cause you know, sometimes they'll come in and they'll, they'll, you know, I mean, if they're talking to me about what they're doing in their life and. I'm like, that's so contrary to everything we're doing in here. Yeah. It's like, can you see that, right? It, the whole 180. It is. <laughs> and it's like, no, we need to align those things together. Mm -hmm. It goes all the way back to, right? If someone thinks they're naturally talented, they're not going to apply this to life. Mm. They're not going to let those two right. come together yeah. because they, because they don't want to admit there's something in their own life that needs changing. Mm -hmm. Cause then we have to admit that maybe we weren't right about everything, or maybe we had a different point of view. Like, people don't want to admit that stuff. And we, that, that's where yeah. humility comes in. Yeah. We have to be open to different points of view. We have to have the ability to be, and I don't want to, I hate to use the word wrong, but it's possible your point of view is <laughs> not the it, complete the point word. of view. <laughs> Imagine. Right? I, I, every day as a teacher, my goal is to learn something new. I try to do it every single day. I want to learn something that I didn't know before. And many times I'm learning from my students. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. Uh, it's it's funny how that happens, isn't it? You know, I mean, it is who's teaching who? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you're open to it, you know, I mean, I, I think some folks yeah. get to a place where they think they know, and that's the end of it. You know, but if you're open to, well, maybe I don't know everything. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and that speaks to this humility you're talking about. You know, you have to have humility. Yeah, because the lack of humility is arrogance. Yeah. It's not confidence. That's something I think everyone needs to understand. Humility doesn't, humility and confidence go hand in hand. 
They do. Confidence is the belief that if you work hard, you can do something well. Arrogance is the desperate need to show the world that you're confident <laughs> when you're not. Mm-hmm. So arrogance is a show. It's putting on a mask and saying, look at, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm confident when you're not, right? When you really don't mm-hmm. feel that. That's where imposter syndrome comes in, everything else. But confidence is this feeling that, no, I've worked really hard. I have a process. I can put that work in and it's going to lead me somewhere. But it takes humility to have confidence. Mm-hmm. I agree. So it's, it, which is an interesting, interesting thing. We need to, I, you know, I, I, it's funny when I'm directing, I don't know how many times it always comes up, but actors always asking me, what about this? I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know. And like, well, what, what are you going to do about that? I'm like, I have no yeah. idea. And I, my favorite thing to say when I'm directing is I don't know. Yeah. And I know so many other directors that are afraid, they're afraid to, to say use that. the term. I don't know. Mm-hmm because they're afraid of how it's going to make them look, or maybe it's going to make them look like less of a director or whatever that is. I'm like, no, as a director, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, Hopefully we're going to jump into this thing and do it together. Yeah. But we're going to discover it. And I, I've grown to love not knowing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, I mean, then you get to find out. <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, uh, it's, it's, I like working with folks that, uh, I feel like I can trust, yeah, you know, and and I trust someone when they tell me the truth. When they say, yeah. when they say, I don't, I don't know, I don't really know. Let's try this, you know, yeah. um, and and that's fun for me. Uh, whereas if, if somebody is like you said, afraid to say I don't know, yeah, they end up taking you somewhere, and 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 it's I've had this experience where you begin to not trust their judgment. Right. You know, or trust where they're trying to take you because you can sense that you don't know, but you're telling me you do. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know? yes. <laughs> and, yeah. and, right. uh, it's false. <laughs> it, it, it just it, yeah. it, it disrupts me. You know, uh, I, I I like I do the same thing, Marco. And, and sometimes I just look at I mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, to me, it's become my biggest skill yeah. as a director. Yeah. Is not needing to know all of the answers ahead of time. Mm-hmm. I'm even thinking of of directing you, Nat, and Say Goodnight, Gracie, and you have this big 11-minute mm-hmm. <laughs> sequence. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, I have no idea what we're going to do with this. I know we need to do something because it's 11 minutes. Mm-hmm. We need to do something that's interesting to the audience. But I have no idea what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. And then we discovered it. We just played and tried mm-hmm. different things, and we discovered it. And, and yes, there's fear involved. Of course there's fear Always. involved because I'm like, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I'm trusting the process, and I'm trusting myself that we're going to figure it out. And that's confidence. Which is confidence. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Even though there's yeah. anxiety with yeah. it. Yeah, that's another yeah, anxiety goes with confidence. Not does. not the, the it's, confidence doesn't eliminate anxiety. No, I still have great anxiety. We had this 11 minute sequence that could be it, it could be boring if we're not careful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's an 11 minute monologue that this whole sequence. It's like what do we do? I don't know, but we mm-hmm. played and figured it out. We got you moving all over the stage. Yep. Brought you back center. We had this beautiful moment. We had mm-hmm. it leveled up and mm-hmm. down. We wrote original music. I mean, it was like it, it ended up being this beautiful thing that there wasn't even a thought in my head of what to do before we started working on it. Mhm. I don't even remember. I, I have to go back to my notes of how that even started. Did you came up with something as a dancer, right? You came up with some. You had some. You, you said. So I remember, like, can you dance? So I'm thinking that you had something <laughs> yeah. already in the back of your mind for music for like behind the monologue. Yeah, I well, I had. I, the, I remember saying, "You're goddamn right, I can dance." The, <laughs> and, I, I, and I knew you could, right, from your previous I was life. Like, I knew yes. You could. But, but I was thinking, yeah, dance, because we had this beautiful record player. Mm. And one of my things of, of directing is if it's on set, I want to use it. It should work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I was like, well, let me use the record player. Might be neat if a character at some point puts on a record. And then I was like, wait a minute. If you could dance, maybe we'll put on some underscoring music. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was – I can't remember what I was – playing around with at the time, but I had some temp music or something uh-huh. I was playing with. We would put on a record and then and you would dance to it. And so that was my thought mm-hmm. of, well, this might be a neat thing. Maybe we'll yeah. put on put on some music and uh-huh. yeah. You but know, the, yeah. The people huh. that that I talked to that saw the show well, I saw the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and I will also agree, but um the people I talked to, that was one of the specific things mm-hmm. that they talked the most about. Yeah, was that that mm-hmm. segment of the show? 
Well, that was our wow moment. So every yeah. show I produce or direct, I, I try to incorporate a wow moment. A wow moment basically means what is something I want people to keep talking about after the show? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to me, Nat's monologue needed to be that wow moment. Uh, the thing that sticks in their mind above everything else. And it's always something different depending on the show, but that was the one that we really wanted to craft. And uh, I, I, th- I thought we ended up, but I mean, really you came up with some, a lot of it was improv dance, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Improv dance. And <laughs> eventually we kind of got to a place where just around this beat be here and around this beat be here, you know, for the, for the marks and the blocking and such. Mm. But um, that daunt, you know, challenging, daunting, whatever, that 11 minute, I don't know how many, two pages maybe, I, I forget. But when you look at it, you're just thinking as an actor, okay, like this is going to be a day, you know, yeah, eventually right. yeah. this, this train is coming in rehearsal. So let me just do what I can, which is, you know, the lines and all that stuff. And then from then on, it's just like, I don't know what it's going to be. You don't know necessarily, but you have these things. And then it just compiled in its way and just became something else that I wouldn't have ever thought to, you know, say, Hey, you know, let's look, I should dance here. Not at all. Just like, (laughs) yeah. And that's the beauty of the creative process is we play around with different things. And at that point, I remember at some point we had the original music, the, the amazing uh, Nicholas Roberts. Um, mm, snaps Nicholas. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, we'll, we'll have to have him on, on a future show. But yeah, he wrote, he scored the, you know, that, that mm-hmm. sequence for us. Beautiful, beautiful music. And then we had to choreograph it to the music. Mm-hmm. The ups and the downs, and and you mm-hmm. know the, the different when the, when the percussion came in, that was at yeah. a certain point, and. But really, it's just as a director, I'm just sitting back and watching you play. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just taking notes That's on what so works wonderful. and what doesn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I love working with yeah. collaborative artists. But it comes back to when I'm working with an artist like Natalie who has patience and is willing to explore and is right. not trying to figure it all out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're just trying to discover mm-hmm. as a director – Man, I just sit back and I just I'm just watching this and saying, well, you know what? Let's try being over here mm-hmm. instead of being over here. You know, I I just tweak things mm-hmm. and then we just continue playing. Mm-hmm. You know, and what a what a gift you know to ha- yes. to have a cast like that. You know, because there are some actors that would become very like if you kept changing or or you know experimenting with different ideas. Um, there's some actors that would shut down. Yes, in, in that circumstance, yes. right, know, and and uh, get very impatient about mm-hmm. getting to the result, right? You know, versus yes. well, let's just keep exploring. You know, yes. let's just keep looking at it and and let's try this, like you said, little tweaks here and there until mm-hmm. you did come up with this wow moment. Yeah. You, you know, it turned out to be that. Yeah. Um, and and I think if you'd had a very rigid idea of what it should be, uh, you may never have discovered what it could be correct you know yeah uh, and, <laughs> yeah and, right and that's that there's that's beautiful and as you know just for everyone out there and aspiring actors or current actors as a director as rob was saying if i didn't have an actor that was so open we couldn't get there mm. i don't want to work with those actors yeah who are closed down if you're if you don't have patience if you're not willing to explore, if you're not willing to say, I don't know, but spend a lot of time in what we call open mode, which is the mode where we just play and discover and try new things. Mm-hmm. That's part of my casting process and my evaluation process of working with actors. That's a critical trait you have to have. Yeah. And when I teach directing at the university, that's the main thing I try to teach them is this is what you need to look for. The industry wants that. You're going to get so much further if you develop patience, uh, develop gratitude. And because the, because the other side of it, people are looking for the, the end result. If they try something and it doesn't work, now they're beating themselves yeah. up. Now they're getting down and they're getting mm-hmm. negative. Oh, it, I'm never oh, going to find it. I'm never so going to much. Oh, it's <laughs> horrible to work with. Yeah. yeah. Talk them away from the cliff because right. they, they, yeah. they equated identity. You know, it's, it's a, it's a big thing actually. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I think that comes down to uh, what uh, Viola Spolin called uh, approval disapproval syndrome. You mm-hmm. know, I think a lot of us you, human beings have this need for approval. Yeah. And and if we do something and it doesn't end up being the idea, uh, we feel disapproved of. And, sure. And so that that can cause us then to contract within ourselves, and 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 uh, then you're dead in the water. You, you, what do you do then? And that's <laughs> and that's where I think training comes in. Mm-hmm. You have to be trained, and and that's why it's like you know we're unfortunately we have there's so much when you're looking for acting training, it's everywhere, right? No matter where you are in this country, it's everywhere, and most of it is not complete. Mm. Most of it. Now a lot of it is going to be budget. People are like, oh, what? Oh, I can go to a conservatory and spend thousands, or I can go here and spend hundreds. I'm going to go here, and or, you know, I can do a yeah. fifty dollars workshop. Right. Oh, you know what? That's good enough. I'm just right. going to do the fifty dollars workshop and then start working. It's like, no, it doesn't work that way. You're going to have to invest in really good training if you want to get to the professional level of this industry. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't want to get to the professional level, which is fine, you want to do it as a hobbyist, maybe community theater every now and then, or student films every now and then, that's okay too. You don't need necessarily the deeper training to, to do that. But if you want to get known as an actor, if you want to go to professional theater and professional film and television, you're going to have to, at some, some way, somehow, invest in better training mm-hmm. because Absolutely. you need to learn these skills and believe it or not, these skills to learn takes patience. <laughs> there is no shortcut to get there. It's, it's over a long period of time that we go through repetition over and over and over. We're, we're just repeating skills over and over and over. Yeah. And it's through that long period of time that we eventually Get somewhere. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, I, I I like to use sports analogies. I'm not really a sports person, but I like to use sports analogies <laughs> when I teach. That's, that's the brilliance <laughs> and, of it. And, <laughs> and, 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 but I did play tennis, and I had I, you know I that's a that sport for year, years and years in my life, and and uh, you know you hit thousands and thousands and thousands of forehands. Yeah, and it's not that you don't know how to hit a forehand. You know, right. it's is that you keep practicing that skill so that when you're in the game, yes. you're not thinking yes. about how to hit a forehand. That's the last. You know, right. it, it, that's what it is, and that's why in acting training, there's so much repetition over and over and over again, so that when you're in the game, when you're in performance, you're no longer thinking about the hows of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're you're more in the actual thing that's happening right now. That's part of then you know, coming back to the letting go. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We can only let go when we know it so well that it's part of who we are. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's right. You know, it, it changes from becoming something you do to becoming something you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's when it, it uh, I guess, seeps into your regular life. When you do something so much. So we work this core exercise that we work on. It's, a, it's, a, it's an exercise on outward focus. Most people are inward focused. Inward focused means you're in your head most of the time. You're physically somewhere. You're in a conversation, but you're thinking about something outside of the conversation. That's called inward focus. Or if you're worried about how you're perceived, what people think, what all that's inward focus. So outward focus is a skill. I don't think anyone's born with outward <laughs> focus. Outward focus is a skill that we have to learn. It takes in a ridiculous amount of energy. But there comes a point when working on the core exercise and outward focus that it seeps into your actual life. Definitely. And eventually, I mean, after thousands of hours of practice of it, eventually it becomes something you are, meaning it's now how you see the world, Mm -hmm. not just in your acting, but in all aspects. you, You have the ability to be in tune. You have the ability to have a conversation and really listen to people. Yeah. And I think that's where it goes back to, yeah, we, it, it, our, our life as a human being and our life as an artist, are, they're one in the same. The <laughs> acting part of it is the skill, but the artistry is who we are outside of acting. Mm. Yeah. And so that's where it, it comes together. And, I, and it, you know, we have a quote that we say, which is, in order to become a better artist, you must first become a better, more fully functioning human being. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because if we're blocked by something out there, how we live our life out there 
it's gonna that's how, that's what we have to use in here mm-hmm. in in our acting. So if we really want to be a better artist, all of the skills that we learn, like patience and gratitude, and even voice and and physicality and all these other things that we learn, uh, being open emotionally, we have to apply to our actual life. I I think it's unavoidable. You know, I, yeah. I, I mean, it, once once you've developed this this ability to put your attention outside of yourself. Um, first of all, it's very liberating uh, to, to get out of one's head. But but it also uh, becomes, as you said, like a way of life. You know, I mean, yes, you, you can certainly have those moments of, it, we all have them, right? Uh, but it becomes kind of a habit. Right. You know, that that you're able to do that. Um, and And people respond to it. Yes. You know, for some folks, it, it freaks them out a little bit uh, that you're paying so much attention to them because right. they're simply not used to it. Yeah. Right. Um, but but most of the time, I find strangers uh, that I'm having just a very brief interaction with for like somebody at the grocery store yes, or something like right. that, that, that then shares something very mm-hmm. intimate Profound with, with me. You. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. and, and it's only because I'm paying attention to them. Right. You know, and, that and outward I, focus, I, I yeah. think the mm-hmm. world could use a lot more of that. Yes. And and another thing I think acting teaches us is, is you know, we talk about this in our classes, is that while we all have different stories mm-hmm. underneath it all, you know, underneath all of our individual experience is something very common that we all share. And it's this thing called humanity. Right. You know, and and when, when we get in touch with that, uh, we connect with individuals in, in a deeper way mm-hmm. um, than than simply from our you know egoic construct of ourselves, right? And and we begin to feel one another and feel you know something intangible but yet very present. Uh, and and so I think that's another beautiful uh, outcome of the training. Yeah, you know, is is just being able to foster those kinds of connections with other human beings, to be able to see yourself in other human beings, right? Um, and and to appreciate and develop this this thing that we call compassion, mm. you know, for just the human condition that we all find ourselves in, mm-hmm. right? We're we're all right. we're all we just got here. I don't know how <laughs> I got <Right>. here, <laughs> but yeah. but we're here, and and we're all sharing this crazy thing called life. Yeah, and and uh, if we can come to life with a little bit more patience and gratitude and compassion and understanding and connection, if we can begin to do those things, you know, love we that. can literally change the world. Ah, you know? love and, that, and and I, I just think that's a, a really important aspect of of in any artistic pursuit, you know, that, yeah. that has its basis in humanity is is that we begin to be better humans. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, Absolutely love that. Beautiful, Rob. And at, on that note, we've reached the end. Oh, okay. That was fast. I know, right? Yeah. These go by so fast. Amazing. <laughs> but thank you once again for being Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Really appreciate so it. Thank you. Thank guys. you so much, uh, Thank Rob. you, Nat, once again. Absolutely. And uh, to all of you out there, we'll, we'll be back again soon with a new episode. Until then, stay tuned. Remember, treat yourself with kindness and reward yourself with the risks that you take. Thank you all. Bye-bye. If you'd like to learn more about our studio and what we do, you can find us online at truthfulacting.com and check out truthfulactingonline.com for our learn at home at your own pace courses. So what I told you was true from a certain point of view. You must unlearn what you have learned. I know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to free your mind. But I can only show you the door. You're the one that has to walk through it.